Hey, car enthusiasts. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into some shocking automotive history. Imagine iconic and innovative cars just thrown away like yesterday's trash. That's right, we're talking about five cars that were thrown into a landfill. You won't believe it, you'll be shocked. Let's get into it. Starting our list at number five, the 1984 Pontiac Fiero. The Fiero was Pontiac's attempt at a mid-engine sports car, aimed at providing a fun driving experience on a budget. However, early models suffered from reliability issues, including engine fires. Due to these problems, many Fieros were abandoned and scrapped, with some ending up in landfills. Despite its initial troubles, the Fiero has gained a cult following today. The Pontiac Fiero was introduced in 1984, as a bold departure from Pontiac's usual lineup of muscle cars and family sedans. Designed to be an affordable entry-level sports car, the Fiero featured a mid-engine layout, a rarity among American cars at the time. This configuration promised balanced handling and a unique driving experience. The car's sleek, wedge-shaped design and pop-up headlights gave it a distinctly modern and sporty look, appealing to a wide range of drivers. Underneath its innovative exterior, the Fiero was powered by a modest 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine, known as the Iron Duke. While this engine offered decent fuel economy, it fell short in terms of performance, delivering just 92 horsepower. Later models would see the introduction of a V6 engine, which improved performance, but did not fully address the car's initial shortcomings. One of the Fiero's most significant issues was its tendency to overheat, leading to engine fires. These incidents were caused by a combination of design flaws and insufficient cooling, tarnishing the car's reputation and leading to numerous recalls. The reliability problems and safety concerns resulted in many owners abandoning their Fieros, and a significant number of these cars were scrapped. Reports even suggest that some ended up in landfills, a grim fate for a car that had shown so much promise. Despite its early troubles, the Fiero has experienced a resurgence in popularity in recent years. Enthusiasts appreciate its unique design, mid-engine layout, and the potential for customization. The Fiero's lightweight chassis and versatile platform have made it a favorite among hobbyists who enjoy modifying and restoring classic cars. Many Fieros have been transformed into high-performance machines, track cars, or even replicas of exotic sports cars. The Fiero's revival is a testament to the passion of its dedicated fan base. Restoring a Fiero often involves addressing the car's original flaws, such as upgrading the cooling system, improving engine performance, and reinforcing structural components. These efforts have helped to preserve the Fiero's legacy and ensure that it remains a beloved classic among car enthusiasts. Driving a restored Fiero offers a unique blend of 1980s nostalgia and modern performance. The car's mid-engine layout provides a distinctive driving experience, with responsive handling and a balanced feel. For those who appreciate the Fiero's innovative design and storied history, owning one is a way to connect with a fascinating chapter in Pontiac's legacy. The story of the Pontiac Fiero highlights the challenges and triumphs of automotive innovation. It serves as a reminder that even cars with rocky beginnings can find redemption through the dedication of their fans. The Fiero's journey from a troubled start to a cherished classic is a testament to the enduring appeal of unique and ambitious automotive designs. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of forgotten automotive legends. Each of these cars has a unique story and a special place in automotive history. Stay tuned for more incredible finds and restorations. At number 4, the 1971 Ford Pinto. The Pinto is infamous for its controversial design flaw, where the fuel tank was prone to rupturing in rear-end collisions, leading to fires. Despite the scandal and numerous recalls, many Pintos were left to rust and were eventually discarded in landfills. The Pinto's story serves as a lesson in automotive safety and corporate responsibility. The Ford Pinto was introduced in 1971 as an affordable, compact car aimed at the growing market for smaller vehicles. With its simple design and low price point, the Pinto quickly became popular among American consumers. Ford's goal was to create a car that was economical to produce and to sell, capitalizing on the demand for fuel-efficient vehicles during the oil crisis of the 1970s. However, beneath its modest exterior, the Pinto harbored a critical design flaw. 
The placement of the fuel tank near the rear bumper made it susceptible to rupture in the event of a rear-end collision. This design flaw led to a number of tragic accidents, where impacted Pintos would burst into flames, resulting in severe injuries and fatalities. The issue was exacerbated by internal documents revealing that Ford had weighed the cost of potential lawsuits against the expense of redesigning the fuel tank, opting not to implement the safety improvements. The resulting scandal severely damaged Ford's reputation and sparked a national debate about automotive safety and corporate ethics. Despite numerous recalls and safety modifications, the damage to the Pinto's image was irreparable. Many owners abandoned their Pintos, and a significant number of these cars ended up rusting away in junkyards or being discarded in landfills. The Pinto's story is often cited as a pivotal moment in the history of automotive safety regulation. It led to increased scrutiny of car manufacturers and the implementation of stricter safety standards. The controversy also highlighted the importance of corporate responsibility and the ethical implications of cost-cutting measures that compromise consumer safety. Today, the Ford Pinto is remembered as much for its scandal as for its role in the automotive landscape of the 1970s. While it is not typically a sought-after collector's item, there are enthusiasts who appreciate its place in history and work to restore and preserve the remaining Pintos. These restored models serve as a reminder of the lessons learned from the Pinto's troubled legacy. The Pinto's narrative underscores the critical need for transparency and accountability in the automotive industry. It serves as a cautionary tale about the potential consequences of prioritizing profits over safety. Despite its flaws, the Pinto has become an important symbol in the ongoing conversation about consumer protection and corporate ethics. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of forgotten automotive legends. Each of these cars has a unique story and a special place in automotive history. Stay tuned for more incredible finds and restorations. Coming in at number 3, the 1961 Chevrolet Corvair. The Corvair was a unique car with a rear engine layout, aiming to compete with European imports. However, it became the subject of Ralph Nader's book, Unsafe at Any Speed, which criticized its handling and safety. As a result, many Corvairs were scrapped and some ended up in landfills. Today, the Corvair is remembered as a controversial yet innovative vehicle. The Chevrolet Corvair was introduced in 1960 as a bold departure from traditional American car design. Featuring a rear-mounted, air-cooled engine and independent suspension, the Corvair was intended to provide a driving experience similar to that of popular European models like the Volkswagen Beetle and Porsche 356. Its sleek, compact design and innovative engineering earned it initial praise and a loyal following. Despite its groundbreaking design, the Corvair soon became embroiled in controversy. In 1965, consumer advocate Ralph Nader published Unsafe at Any Speed, a scathing critique of the American auto industry with a particular focus on the Corvair. Nader highlighted several safety concerns, including the car's tendency to oversteer, which could lead to loss of control particularly in inexperienced hands. The book sparked a national debate about automotive safety and led to increased scrutiny of car manufacturers. The negative publicity surrounding the Corvair had a profound impact on its reputation and sales. Although General Motors made several design changes to improve the car's safety in later models, the damage was already done. Many owners abandoned their Corvairs and a significant number were scrapped or left to deteriorate. Some even ended up in landfills, marking a sad chapter in the history of an otherwise innovative vehicle. Despite its controversial past, the Corvair has experienced a resurgence in appreciation among car enthusiasts. Collectors and restorers recognize the Corvair's unique place in automotive history and value its innovative engineering. The Corvair's rear-engine layout and distinctive styling make it a standout at classic car shows, and restored models often attract significant attention. Restoring a Corvair involves addressing the safety concerns that originally tarnished its reputation. Enthusiasts often upgrade the suspension and handling characteristics to ensure a safer and more enjoyable driving experience. These efforts have helped to rehabilitate the Corvair's image, allowing it to be celebrated for its engineering achievements rather than solely for its controversies. The story of the Chevrolet Corvair underscores the importance of safety in automotive design and the impact of public perception on a car's legacy. It serves as a reminder of the balance between innovation and responsibility. 
and the lasting effects that consumer advocacy can have on the industry. The Corvair's journey from a revolutionary design to a subject of controversy, and finally to a respected classic, highlights the complex nature of automotive history. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of forgotten automotive legends. Each of these cars has a unique story and a special place in automotive history. Stay tuned for more incredible finds and restorations. Number two on our list is the 1985 Cadillac Cimarron. Cadillac attempted to enter the compact luxury market with the Cimarron, but it was essentially a rebadged Chevrolet Cavalier with a higher price tag. The car failed to meet expectations in terms of performance and luxury, leading to poor sales and many being abandoned. Some Samarans were ultimately thrown into landfills, marking one of Cadillac's most notable missteps. The Cadillac Samaran was introduced in 1982 as part of Cadillac's effort to compete in the emerging compact luxury segment, which was gaining popularity due to rising fuel prices and changing consumer preferences. The idea was to create a small, fuel-efficient car that retained the luxury and prestige associated with the Cadillac brand. However, the execution of this concept left much to be desired. At its core, the Cimarron was a Chevrolet Cavalier with some cosmetic upgrades and a Cadillac badge. This badge engineering approach did not sit well with customers who expected more from a Cadillac. Despite adding leather seats, additional sound insulation, and other luxury touches, the Samaran struggled to differentiate itself from the much cheaper Cavalier. The underwhelming four-cylinder engine and lackluster performance further alienated Cadillac's traditional customer base. Critics and consumers alike were quick to point out the Samaran's shortcomings. The car failed to deliver the premium driving experience expected from a Cadillac, and its high price tag only added insult to injury. Sales were disappointing, and the Samaran quickly gained a reputation as a poorly executed attempt at downsizing. The negative reception and poor sales had lasting consequences for the Samaran. Many owners, disillusioned with their purchase, chose to abandon or sell their vehicles. As a result, a significant number of Samarans ended up in junkyards, and some were even disposed of in landfills. The Samaran became a symbol of Cadillac's misjudgment, and a lesson in the risks of cutting corners to enter new markets. Despite its failure, the Cimarron holds a peculiar place in automotive history. It serves as a cautionary tale for automakers about the importance of maintaining brand integrity and meeting consumer expectations. The Cimarron story is often cited in discussions about the perils of badge engineering and the challenges of adapting to market changes. Interestingly, in recent years, there has been a small but growing community of enthusiasts dedicated to preserving the Cimarron's legacy. These collectors appreciate the car for its unique place in Cadillac's history and its role as a symbol of the brand's evolution. Restoring a Samaran involves addressing its performance deficiencies and enhancing its luxury features to create a more satisfying driving experience. The 1985 Cadillac Samaran is a reminder of the complexities and challenges faced by car manufacturers. It highlights the importance of innovation, quality, and understanding consumer expectations. While it may be remembered as one of Cadillac's most notable missteps, the Samaran story also illustrates the potential for redemption and the enduring fascination with automotive history. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of forgotten automotive legends. Each of these cars has a unique story and a special place in automotive history. Stay tuned for more incredible finds and restorations. And finally, at number one, the 1975 Bricklin SV1. This Canadian-built sports car boasted innovative safety features and gull-wing doors, but production issues and financial problems led to its downfall. Many unsold and defective Bricklins were disposed of, with reports of some being sent directly to landfills. It's a tragic end for such a unique and ambitious vehicle. The Bricklin SV1 was the brainchild of American entrepreneur Malcolm Bricklin, who envisioned a sports car that prioritized safety without compromising on style and performance. The SV1, which stands for Safety Vehicle 1, was produced in New Brunswick, Canada, and was equipped with a range of innovative safety features that were ahead of its time. These included an integrated roll cage, energy-absorbing bumpers, and a body made from acrylic resin bonded to fiberglass for increased durability. One of the most striking features of the Bricklin SV1 was its distinctive gull-wing doors, which gave it a futuristic appearance and set it apart from other sports cars of the era. 
The SV-1 was powered by a V8 engine, initially sourced from AMC and later from Ford, providing ample performance to match its bold design. Despite its promising concept and eye-catching looks, the Bricklin SV-1 was plagued by production issues from the start. The assembly process was fraught with delays and quality control problems, leading to inconsistencies in the final product. Additionally, the SV-1's high price tag and limited dealer network hindered its marketability. Financial difficulties further compounded these problems, and the company was unable to sustain production. By 1976, less than 3,000 Bricklin SV-1s had been produced before the company went bankrupt. The fallout from the collapse of Bricklin's venture left many unsold and defective cars in limbo. Reports suggest that a significant number of these vehicles were ultimately scrapped, with some even being sent directly to landfills. It was a disheartening conclusion for a car that had aimed to revolutionize the sports car market with its emphasis on safety and innovation. Despite its short-lived production run and the challenges it faced, the Bricklin SV1 has garnered a loyal following among car enthusiasts. Collectors and restorers appreciate the SV1 for its unique design and the bold vision behind its creation. Restoring a Bricklin often involves addressing the original production flaws and ensuring the car's innovative features are brought back to their intended glory. The Bricklin SV1 story is a poignant reminder of the fine line between ambition and execution in the automotive industry. It illustrates the challenges of bringing a groundbreaking concept to market and the harsh realities of financial and production constraints. Yet, the SV1's legacy endures as a symbol of innovation and the quest for safer, more advanced automobiles. The Bricklin SV1 remains a fascinating chapter in the history of automotive design, showcasing the potential for creativity and the pursuit of safety in a sports car. Its tale is both inspiring and cautionary, highlighting the importance of balancing visionary ideas with practical execution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of forgotten automotive legends. Each of these cars has a unique story and a special place in automotive history. Stay tuned for more incredible finds and restorations. So, there you have it. Five cars that were thrown into a landfill. Stories that are hard to believe but true. Which one shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more amazing automotive content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.